morning. Good morning. We are in Birmingham, about to head down that flight. <sighs> 20 something lots to do today. 20 some lots to do today. I think we're going to try and get to Minworth. Oh, no. I looked Still at, in a two, tier three, moving to a tier three. Tier threes everywhere. <laughs> I looked at the weather forecast and we woke up. It's about 8 a.m. It's still quite early. And I was like, oh, it's not due to rain today. So we should go. What's it's it raining doing? right now. It's raining right now. Yeah. Anyway. Chickens have been cut. Their giblets have been looked at. And they have determined that it will not be raining. <clears throat> Clearly there was something wrong with those giblets. It's actually really nice to be back in Birmingham. Like, I really like this area of canal. And it's deserted. There's no one on any mooring. Yeah. It's very quiet. It's the town is very quiet. It's pretty much two years to the day since we were moored here last time. Yeah, and it's quite, like, amazing the difference. I mean, obviously, COVID has, you know, played its part in all of this. But it's like last year, there was a, a massive section over this way that was just surrounded with hoardings as, as work was being done, demolition and everything. And a lot of that's cleared out. And you yeah. can see more of what's actually happening. Well, that's cool. It's just the and canal. The Christmas market's gone. Yeah, which is yeah. which is good because town isn't quite so hectic. Yeah. But um, yeah, just the canal side is just so nice here. Mm -hmm. It is. It's really, really lovely, clean, comfortable. But due to the fact we don't really want to be in a busy city right now because of COVID, we are going to go to Baisley. Yeah. Which is that way. So we're off our rockers, really. <laughs> We're just a few metres from the top lock, and so we get the water raised and the gate open before we set off. Unfortunately, a Canal and River Trust employee decides to shut it right in front of us, although once he finally notices us right next to the lock, he swings it back open again. We're right outside a Canal and River Trust office here, so I guess he was just trying to be helpful as he passed. Next to the top lock is Cambrian Basin. The basin was once also the start of a now lost canal called the Newhall Branch. If you're interested in finding out more about the history of the BCN, I can highly recommend the videos by Andy Tidy. In one of his videos, he follows the route of the Newhall Branch, so I'll link it below in case anyone wants to go and have a watch after this. We've got quite a few lock flights to do today, starting with the Farmer's Bridge Locks, a descent of 81 feet down 13 locks between here and the Snow Hill area of Birmingham. We're on the Birmingham and Faisley Canal, which unsurprisingly runs all the way from here to Faisley Junction, 15 miles and 38 locks away, so about two days of cruising. This flight of locks takes us right past the very central part of the city of Birmingham, and they somewhat remind me of the Rochdale 9 in Manchester. The Manchester locks are wide and these are obviously narrow, and although there are more of these locks, I would say that these are slightly easier to travel through despite their heavy gates. It's highly unlikely that we'll meet another boat today, and as these locks are in a straight line and very close together, we can see down the flight and know that no one's coming. This allows us to walk ahead and get the locks set ahead of time. It feels like such a blessing that these locks have survived when so many of the Birmingham canals were lost, especially when we're passing through this very narrow corridor surrounded by so much modern development. Talking of lost canals, the old Whitmore arm left the main navigation in this pound. Another thing that makes these locks fairly easy is the fact that they're not too deep, only about six feet. Now for the slightly less pleasant underground lock.
At this lock, the balance beam is on the off side of the canal, so Michael can step off the boat and use this very handy old staircase to go and close the gate behind him. This saves me an extra trip scrambling across the top of the gates. It's fun and games at the next lock because I just can't get the gate to open. Time to call in the reinforcements. As a bonus for opening the gate, Michael gets to meet some doggies while the lock is draining. Although these locks are narrow and not too deep, the gates are surprisingly heavy to swing. So we're going to be exhausted by the end of the day. It's about half a mile from the Snow Hill area and the bottom of the Farmer's Bridge Locks to the top of the next flight, which is the Aston Locks. There aren't many options for mooring in between the flights, so most people do both in one day. There are some interestingly named wharfs along here, starting with Honduras Wharf. Then there's Petrania Wharf, Corporation Wharf and City and St Stephen's Wharf. There are 11 locks on this flight and they'll take us down towards Cuckoo Wharf and Salford Junction. I walk ahead to set the next lock and Michael walks further down the flight to do a few after that. When Michael radios to say that he's on his way back up, I can start to drop the water in this lock and George supervises as usual. As you can see, the pounds between the locks extend into the space next to the locks and a little island is created on the lock side. The by washes here have quite a lovely design and they have grates over them to stop debris falling through. It seems the grates are a little too wide to catch plastic bottles though. There seems to be a lot of water in this canal at the moment. The bywashes are flowing, but there must be more water coming down than they can handle. The remaining three locks on this flight are a little more spread out. 
There are actually some visitor moorings in this pound, but from what I hear, very few people choose to use them, and sure enough, they're empty again today. With all the water flowing down this canal, some of the by washes have a pretty forceful flow below the lock to steer past. At least that's Michael's excuse for not driving in a straight line. You. That's 24 locks done, but that's not the end of the cruise yet. We're going to carry on to Minworth. There are some disused and infilled arms that lead off the canal here. They would have once served the cast iron, soap, asphalt and brass works in the area. There are some visitor moorings at Cuckoo Wharf, but they've never looked that inviting to us. We've always moored at Star City, which is just round the corner, but not the route we're taking today. Ahead, we'll pass under the M6 motorway, and then we'll reach a four-way junction. Turn left and you'll join the Thames Valley Canal, which is also part of the BCN, and it'll take you back towards Walsall. Taking a very hard right will take you onto the Grand Union Canal, which, if you follow for 130 miles, will take you to the River Thames in London. We're going straight across the junction to stay on the Birmingham and Faisley Canal. Through the bridge stanchions you can see the huge Star City Leisure Complex. It's a pretty convenient mooring if you want a cinema trip, not that that's possible at the moment. This morning we went through a lock that was under an office building, and now the canal takes us under a whole factory. I know not everyone enjoys urban canals, preferring to stick to peaceful, idyllic rural waterways, but coming through urban areas like this is honestly so fascinating, and you get to see the city from such a unique perspective. I think the Birmingham canals are well worth a visit, even if you're just passing through. It's two and a half miles from the junction to Minworth, and it's pretty industrial feeling the whole way. Eventually, the rooftops start getting lower and there's slightly more space between the buildings, and even a little bit of green. The commercial buildings give way to residential areas as we get further away from the city centre.
It's early afternoon and the winter sun is really low in the sky as Michael brings the boat into Minworth Top Lock. There are just three locks on the Minworth flight, each about six foot deep, and they're spread out over the next mile or so. These locks have a very different feel to the ones back in the city. They were built by the same canal company and they have the same mechanisms and hardware but it's definitely slightly more peaceful here. And they even have some grass surrounding them, not just bricks and concrete. This bridge has seen better days. Uh, mind your head, Michael. It's been a long, tiring day, so George and I hitch a lift to tonight's mooring, which hopefully isn't too far away now. What is a curd worth? Ooh, a curd worth, I mean. What is a curd worth? Less than a block of cheese? More than a block of cheese? Inquiring minds want to know. I'm so tired. Me too. So, 27 locks we've done today. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we're in curd worth. Curd worth? Curd worth. We've done the Minworth locks and then we've travelled on another two miles. But we haven't got the energy to do the curd worth 11. Yet. Specifically, that tunnel defeated us. <laughs> I was like, you know what, that's it. We've done the Netherton, we've done this, we've done that. I'm not going through another 120 50 yard. yard, yeah, 50 yards of, that's it, we're done. So, um, it's probably nice the mooring no, down. We're stopping the channel. We're staying in curd worth. See you guys in 10 years. We're not. <sighs> so it's tired. probably nice the mooring through there, but yeah, no energy. Yeah. And like just once we got past the Minworth locks, definitely felt like we'd left Birmingham. Like, oh yeah, I mean that's the amazing thing when you do this is like, you're in this deep core of the city, running through you know the Venice of uh, like, like the the canals of Venice type. It's it goes everywhere. It's underneath mm. all the buildings and stuff. Yeah. And then you turn on your way towards Minworth and. It's all industrial, but it, it's, it's... It's when you start to pass... It's not quite when you get to the locks. No, it is. Well, it's it gets a little bit residential there. And then after the locks, definitely is rural. Yeah. I think I guess it's when you hit the... When you pass the Cincinnati factory, where they've redone a bunch of... Oh, yeah. Of the um, of sort of buildings there as um, 
residential housing that's right on the old Cincinnati yeah, that's works, true. which now just says Cincinnati. I remember that from those. Yeah, <laughs> in Cincinnati. But we're still on the um, BCN. We're on the Birmingham and Faisley Canal. Funny enough, because we're traveling from Birmingham to Faisley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, it was nice to get out of the city. It was nice to see the city. Yeah, but... it was nice to pass through, but I didn't have any desire to spend any time in a built-up urban area right now. No. And um, yeah, so this is the fifth day in a row that we've moved. And we've got one more day to get to Faisley and that Michael's going to let me have a couple of days off, he says. <laughs> I was thinking we'd have a couple of weeks off. I'd like to have a couple of weeks off. We have to double check the stoppage, stoppage yeah. which is the real problem, is is there is a lock. Well, actually, I think it's a bridge. On the Trenton Mersey, I think. But yeah, there's some. There's a big repair coming and it... it it's in mid-January, so we've got like a few weeks, but we've got to go all the way to Fradley and then turn right. Yeah, and so, make it up past there. So we need to check, basically. So it is actually a fairly large amount of distance still. But I would really love a week off. Understandable. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I've got math to catch up on. Yeah, which I've is got a long story. Logs to catch up on. Yeah. I've got sleep to catch up on. Definitely with the sleeping. So, is that it? Yeah. Saying? I mean, the only other thing we should talk about today is the fact that George terrorized a bunch of Teenager. Oh, that's really annoying coming coming down through Birmingham um, through the farmers bridge locks or the farmers locks like it, we were quite early so there was lots of kids on their way to school and so many people get freaked out by uh, English bring a spaniel looking forlorn well, so it was kind of fun because there was there was two boys who came walking along and and one of the boys saw George and was like you know, leaning towards him, and he looked at me, and he says, "Does he bite?" But I didn't hear, "Does he bite?" I heard, "Is he white?" The problem being that I'm like, you know, standing on top of a big diesel engine, and I'm revving it to try and stay where I'm in place in the lock. And so when he asked this, I was just like, "Is he white?" Well, I mean, and brown. Like I just didn't know how to respond to it, so I didn't really have a response. And I was like, "Oh yeah, well, oh wait," and then I, you know. The moment I said, oh, yeah, he, like, backs off and, like, just, just, oh, my gosh, and he pulls his hand away. And and I was like, oh, no, 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 you said, does he bite? No, 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 he's, he's totally friendly. You can pet him. And then this kid's, like, leaning forward, like, really tentatively, like, I don't know if I trust the man. I don't know if I trust him. And then these, uh, yeah, so he, he gives George this little tiny pet and then sort of, you know, runs off. And this is, like, a, I don't know, 16-year-old kid. And, um, but it was funny because... Then like two minutes later, there's this group who come around the corner and it's like four or five girls and they just come around this hedge and see George. And it's just like, everybody's just like, ah, you know, and they, <laughs> they all don't know how to deal with it. Them. One of them wants to say hello. And then she was, as they walked off, she was having a go at the other one for being so scared of George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was funny because the one goes, you know, he's like, is it okay to pet him? And I'm like, sure. Yeah, I know. He's totally friendly. And then I was like, unless your hand smells a bit like sausage, then you might lick it. And then they're all just like, oh, gosh, no, no, can't have that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. I need to eat and sleep. Yeah. So, you know, if anybody's got some sausage for George, I'm sure he'd be happy with that. He's looking rather forlorn. Poor, right now, poor George living with vegetarians. He um, just, doesn't get much. No, it's a sad time for him. Going backwards. Going backwards. George, you don't look so forlorn. Getting backwards. <sighs> yeah. Good day. Long day. Long day on the end of a series of long 27 days. 27 locks. I was pushing to go up the Curdware fight. No, you weren't. No, I wasn't. And I think it's down. Down the Curdware fight. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Good God, my thumb is covered in goop. Anyway, um... Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell if you want to get notifications. Oh, yeah, I've with that. Of, yeah, I've completely flubbed this one. So, thanks for watching. Give us a dirty thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> dirty thumbs up is probably a bad idea. <laughs> My God. <laughs> just, just clean that off. So, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get our time lapses, and if that bell thing is still a thing, click it for notifications. Airplane. Good, good.